Hi, everybody, and welcome to another Playful Humans podcast. I'm your host, Mike Montague, and my guest this week is Chase Kaufman. He's a former NFL tight end and Mizzou alumni as well, and uh, now he's a financial planner. We'll talk with him about both. You can find him at bmgadvisors.com or connect with him on LinkedIn. Uh, that's where I got connected, and we're both here in Kansas City, so uh, we met in person one time as well. If you would like to meet more Playful Humans, go to playfulhumans.com. We have a club where we help adults rediscover the power of play in their life and help you hopefully play for a living. So go check it out, playfulhumans.com. Here we go. Just the woohoos, Chase, and then we'll get started. There, yeah, there we go. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, the, we like to start with the joke of the week on the podcast. The joke of the week is brought to you by uh, the number zero to the guy who invented zero. Thanks for nothing. All right. Uh, here's the joke The past, present, and future walk into the bar, and it was intense. Uh, Tense. That's a grammar's joke for you there. All right. Uh, do you have a favorite joke, Chase? Um. Yeah. The one. The one that's been uh, close to me right now is is one that my six year old son is is saying a lot, and it's um, what is a skunk's favorite favorite meal? And if you want to try try for that, yeah, it's uh, peanut butter and smelly. So <laughs> um, they, they gets a lot of laughs out of the the six seven and younger crowd that's definitely the demographic of our joke of the week uh, yeah. for sure <laughs> so uh awesome i suppose uh, i'll do a little bit of the heavy lifting for you and and tell you what what i know and then i'll love to hear more about your background <laughs> but uh i went to the university of missouri a couple of years before you and i grew up here in kansas city so uh i first heard of you when you were playing tight end for the missouri tigers and you set all kinds of records there for touchdowns. I think I may have even watched you play at Arrowhead uh, in person and uh, and at Mizzou. And um, it was, for me, uh, you're a really fun player and, and a fun team to watch. You guys had a ton of offense and you're hurdling people and doing all kinds of uh, cool things. That's when I became a fan. And then you made it to the NFL uh, too and got to spend uh, yeah. seven years on and off in, in the NFL. And I was always rooting for you. But um, we've had some pretty good tight ends here in Kansas City to, to live up to. Uh, yeah. And you were kind of, uh, was that right? You were right in between uh, Tony Gonzalez and Travis Kelsey is kind of yeah, like the so timeline when I, it came out, right? I never, um, 2009 was the, the draft that I came out in and I never got the opportunity to play for the Chiefs, which, you know, was my yeah. hometown team and favorite team growing up, um, but did have a pretty neat experience of, you know, growing up watching Tony Gonzalez and that kind of being somebody that I modeled my game after and getting to play with him, his last two seasons in the NFL in Atlanta, which was really cool. And, uh, and great to learn from somebody, you know, obviously that has had a career like himself. Yeah, that's awesome. So I, I think a lot of kids, you know, dream about being a professional athlete or, or when you start playing, you start playing uh, football or any sport for fun mm -hmm. But I know doing it for a living is a completely different thing. And then you also have this weird college thing where you're doing it for a living, but you're not getting paid for four years. So you have indentured yeah. servitude. <laughs> back, back, on the back, back then, back then, yeah. now they, now they, golly, with all this NIL stuff, it's a, it's a very interesting landscape. And um, heck, I don't know how coaches are even dealing with it right now. Everybody's just learning as you go. Yeah, for sure. So I guess, I mean, that's what the answer is for everybody. But if you could help out mm -hmm. kids, uh, I'm wondering, was there ever a time when it switched from being fun for you to being a job? Or were you able to enjoy every minute of it as long as you got to play? And what advice would you give for yeah. somebody who hasn't quite made it to that level yet, where they're still in the fun and they're like, I just love yeah. the, the sport of football? Yeah, just try to keep that love of the game, um, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, wrestling soccer i mean there's everything out there um, I, I mean even if it's not a sport right try to keep the love of it for as long as you possibly can um and in anything that's where you're going to want to learn you're going to want to put in the work and it's going to be less of a job um and so for football right like the the time when that started turning for me was 
when I, when I was in the NFL and when I was getting cut and as I started having a family and, you know, kids where each time I got called or, or cut was like, oh man, like now I have to, you know, pick up and move within, you know, five hours <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> so across dumb, yeah. and across the country and, you know, all right, like my wife, Stacy, um, as I would get calls for workouts or, or to be potentially signed by different teams back being back here in Kansas city and like, all right, you know, like how, how long do I have to make it to the airport and, you know, maybe grab a date real quick or, you know, <laughs> something like that before I, before I leave. Um, and it's just, it's, yeah, it, as, as different things become more prioritized in your life, um, like, like your marriage or your kids, and you realize how much time something like that football uh, specifically mm -hmm. takes it's like is it is it still worth it right what's the reward of it and you know playing the game of football is um I don't do that now obviously I'd probably get hurt very seriously <laughs> but um you know there has to be enough of a reward to to take the risk um, whether yeah. that's the risk of just you know moving your family all around and not ever really being settled or you know, getting injured or just not starting into a career earlier than, than you would if you continued pursuing the sport. Um, you know, there's risk reward with everything. And, and again, for me, um, football was, you know, until the end playing the game was, was amazing and fun and, uh, and even practicing, but, you know, the business side of things. And as that takes over and it's like, you know, how much time am I spending on this and what am I getting in return for it? You know, like, am I, is there a real chance that I'm even going to make this team? Um, and you know, you'd never really know unless you go find out, but you have to be willing to do that and, and be all in on it because if you're not all in, then you might as well never show up. Yeah, I mean, there's a ton to unpack there, but I guess the the first lesson for me and all of it is uh, I had a very similar thing in soccer, but it was at, at the college level for me. I love playing soccer growing mm -hmm. up. I got to play with my friends all the way through high school. Like nine of our 11 starters were people that I played from kindergarten up with in high school. And so it was still fun. But when I went to MU and it was just rec league and, and club soccer there, but I was young for my grade. So I'm about 17, 18. And you're playing mm -hmm. against like 24 year old ex Marines and I'm getting beat up. And then I go back to the uh, fraternity house and I'm and they're like, how was the game? And I was like, eh, it was all right. We won. What'd you guys do? And they're like, we're at the hot tub with these girls. And you're like, Oh, wait yeah. a second. Get your butt kicked <laughs> by Marines. <laughs> yeah. And like you said, like fly around the country and live out of hotel rooms and work out for people and mess with a lot yeah. of contracts or mm -hmm. have fun with my wife and, and kids. It yeah. starts changing those priorities a lot. And I think that is really interesting because also sometimes the dream isn't what yeah. we wanted it to be. So I had the same thing in radio where I, I thought like as a little kid, I used to practice having my own radio show mm -hmm. and doing interviews like this with my brother and, and yeah. stuff. And then uh, when I got there, I was like, oh, this is kind of boring. The pay is not great. The pay is terrible. Mm -hmm. The hours are not much uh, better because I was working nights and uh, I tell a funny joke and nobody would listen. And you're like, OK, well, that's not <laughs> what it, yeah. like uh, that's not what I had pictured in my head. And I think yeah. uh, a lot of people struggle with that in any career. Right. You, you think you want to be yeah. a doctor and then you realize that like, oh, I don't even get to practice medicine that much. I'm in board mm -hmm. meetings or yeah. training or other things all day. And so mm -hmm. uh, I'm interested now that you're out of that, how you see things with um, the financial planning that you do and, and how you see things as a, a career or maybe even just how you keep your head straight through yeah. all of that. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, now it's, it's just such a, I feel like a, a longer term game. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I can do this for the rest of my life. Uh, financial advising, financial planning um, as a group, we, you know, we do financial planning and investing and, you know, continuing to teach people and have the mindset of like, this is not like an in and out of the market, just, you know, gambling game. And, you know, that you can do that and people win on that too. But, you know, we're in this thing for the long term and we're trying to set, you know, good habits where, 
you know, we're doing the right thing day in and day out consistently. And that's not that, you know, fun and, and, and sexy sometimes, but over time and especially over a lifetime, um, you know, we've all heard of compound interest and, mm-hmm. you know, that setting those habits in all different aspects of life is just so important. And I want to go back to, um, you know, not everything is all, all it's cracked up to be, whether that's professional sports or radio or uh, doctor, um, and just encourage everybody that, that may listen to this, that, you know, there's going to be hard things in everything that you do. It's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. Mm. If it's good, it's probably going to take time. And there's probably going to be a, a, some, at least some parts that you're not going to like, and that you're going to wonder, you know, is this the right thing for me? And um, as I've gotten into financial advising and planning, I've thought that thought, you know, plenty of times. <laughs> and, I, and I knew getting into this, um, just praying over it and uh, looking and asking people that have been doing it, you know, like, how, how, did, how did you get started? You know, what's the process like? And it's supposed to take a while to really get up and going and um, feel like you're even qualified to do, do a, a good job in this industry. And, you know, through the ups and downs being early in this career, um, it's like, man, God, is this, the, is this what you really have for me? Like, I feel like I'm not having any success at times. And something that I uh, really started going to, my brother sent me this Bible verse. And anytime people send me, you know, football, football cards or whatever, from, you know, shoot, about 15 years ago now, um, when, I, when I first came out. I think it was 12 or 13, but um, I write this Bible verse on there when I sign my name and it's Galatians 6, 9. And it says, do not grow weary in doing good for at the proper time you will reap a harvest if you do not mm-hmm. give up. And I just continue to remind people that, that want to do, you know, big, exciting things. Um, and that's, you know, including myself in financial advising and planning, you know, don't give up, uh, just continue doing the right things, continue doing the good things. Because at the proper time, you will you will reap a harvest if you do not give up, um, and to continue to remember the reasons that you got into it, and the things that that you thought you liked about it or liked about it, getting into it, and go back to those and reassessing those as you as you get further down the path, um, and so, you know you got to get into things, um, or you, you have yeah you have to get into things to understand or realize if you really do like it or not. Yeah, that's true too. I mean, there's nothing wrong. I always say there's nothing wrong with, with pivoting, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, If that's not what you like, find out what you did like out of it. And uh, I think sports is an interesting one like that too, because there are a lot of jobs in sports that are not on the field or or the court uh, or whatever. Right. So it could be, you love coaching or it could be uh, you love announcing or, or something else. And I feel like the same thing is true in every creative or playful profession, whether you're a musician or an artist or uh, a teacher or anything else is that there are a lot of different ways to do that. And you can find something mm. you like in everything and you can find something you don't like uh, about everything. I hate the quote, like, if you find uh, your passion, you'll never work another day in your life. And it's, yeah. well, we still have to pay taxes. We still have days where we for yeah. sick and don't feel like getting up and, and going to work. So yeah. I don't feel like that's true, but I love your quote better. It's that if you're doing things that are good, that you love, that are are playful, they will pay off. Good things don't mm-hmm. just disappear in the world. They're not frivolous. Those are the things yeah. that are, are meaningful and they, they come back to you and people notice when yeah, you have that. Yeah, yeah, and doing it the right way, right? Like it's sustainable when you're doing it that way. And, and like you said, and like I said, it's not, it's, <laughs> there's nothing that I, 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 ref- yeah, I don't believe that quote either. Um, you know, if you do what you love, you're never going to work a day in your life. Um, you know, show me somebody that's, that feels that way about what they're doing and, you know, that they haven't gone through like stressful and hard and, you know, tough days where it's like, what is going on in my career right now? Um, I don't think anybody's not gone through that. And, you know, there is something about um, just walking through life with, with a peace um, and a joy in the things that you are doing, but also doing that through difficult and stressful and kind of wild times. I mean, I think everybody's had to um, pivot or reassess 
what they've been doing the last year and a half uh, since COVID started. And so, yeah, you know, what, well, that's one of the questions yeah. I wanted to follow up and ask you, because I feel like from your uh, football experience, you have to be particularly good at this, which is divorcing the results from your intentions and, and actions that you can't control whether the quarterback throws it to you on Sunday or yeah. not, or where it comes in or where the defense is when you get there, like you can only control yeah. your behavior. And I've heard people say you're never as good as your best day or as bad as your, your worst day. And I feel yeah. like financial advising or COVID it's all kind of the, the same thing. You're not going to be as smart as your best investment and you're not going to be as, as dumb as your worst one. How do you yeah. keep a healthy self-esteem through ups and downs like that? Um, uh, I mean, so the biggest, the biggest thing is I, I grew up in a Christian household going to church and Jesus, right. Like continuing to stay in the Bible. There's so many good things in there. Well, I mean, whether you're a Christian or not. Um, so I'd encourage people to, to get in the Bible. Um, and then secondly, just your support group, right? Like my wife has been amazing for me. Um, and then just a select group of friends and family that, you know, you continue to, as things are good and bad, um, be around those people so that, that you can hear those things, right? Like, man, you, you did such a great job on this. And ultimately, you, you know, whether you screwed it up or, uh, mm. or that if like <laughs> you had the, the full hand in, in the success, right? Like, man, like I, I picked this, you know, this fund or stock and, and it just, you know, it, it went, way up and it's all this stuff well it could have gone way down too depending on like a couple of different things that I have no control over um you know we we you know worked our butt off this week for x team and you know everything went right this week right well you can do the same thing the next week and everything go wrong and you know it there's just so many uncontrollables in life um which again leads back to just like compound in interest and consistency and, and just doing good habits the right way whether they actually work out or not that day or that week or that month right life is a long time um and mm. and football and professional sports you don't really have a long time um to, to you, ha you have to make things happen in a quick time and be ready and and you know you could get cut potentially any day and that was my feeling a lot but to, con to, to con NFL, huh? yeah to continue to to just do the right things over and over um and now you know trying to set that mindset with with our clients at bmg is you know let's just continue to do the right things right sometimes the market's going to take a dip sometimes it's going to be way up but you know what are your goals and you know this is how this is how we plan to get there is kind of the main thing and stick to that yeah, I had one other quick follow up question on that about your identity, because as I found something funny when I was on the radio, I had the alter ego Romeo. I was Romeo on Mix 93.3 and 105.1 uh, here in Kansas City. And uh, so I could go out and I could be Mike and nobody had any idea who I, I was. I could go out and work mm -hmm. out at the gym and be listening to myself on the radio. And nobody, nobody has any idea that my station and, and shows on at that time. And I feel like football is a little bit that way too. You're wearing helmets and people might know mm -hmm. your name or certain things, but if they're not a fan of football or you, you know, walk two blocks <laughs> away from the stadium and, and go to dinner, nobody has any idea that that was you out there on the, the, the field. How do you think about fame or, or celebrity or, or success and how that wraps into your identity and, and make sure that it's not, not too tied up there either. Yeah, um, it's a slippery slope because, you know, like you said, you know, you're never as good or as, as bad as uh, <laughs> maybe that day would suggest. Um, so, you know, like there's there's the ups and, and the downs and usually you're you're probably somewhere in between and emotionally you got to stay there too um, to continue doing those those things and, you know, stay building on the habits that you've already created. But um did you have to think of uh, chase the football player as somebody different than chase the, the family man, or, or was it all just part of, of who you mm -hmm. are and a little mix of everything? I try to make that as consistent as possible. Both of those, mm -hmm. um, just because I don't, 
you know, I don't want to be somebody completely different, but that being said, like, you, you know, when you step on that field, you got to flip a switch. Um, <laughs> and especially, uh, when you're on special teams and like running down there on a punt or kickoff or, or even blocking this, you know, the same way, like you got to be ready to, you know, stick your head in there and like be willing to take the risk of getting hurt and, or, or, you know, protecting yourself so that, that you can make the block that springs, uh, you know, whoever's returning the ball. I, I never had that. Kind Do you of think that translated to off the field? I mean, I, I know, you're not taking that kind of risk in, in financial advising, but are mm -hmm. you, do you feel like that led you to be more of a risk taker or a, a emotional risk too uh, off the field? Or are those completely different things? Um, Cause I can see where in football you're in the yeah. moment. And like you said, you're like, I got to go all out or I'm going to get hurt. If I go, go yeah. halfway. Yeah. You're going to get hurt. But you're going to get cut. Yeah. You um, have that I, kind of I, adrenaline and stuff off the, the field or, or. Yeah. Not? So, I mean, I think the thing that, like football taught me one of the biggest things is just don't like number one, don't quit. Um, if, if you, if you think that you want to do it, you got to show up and give full effort. Um, so if that's, you know, taking risk and just putting your, like asking, asking for clients, asking for um, opportunities to meet different people um, or learn from different people. Um, football has given me an amazing platform um, and, and I want to go back to your identity question too, is, you know, I'm the oldest of four and three younger siblings. And we also all, all had the opportunity to play division one sports and have division one scholarships. And something that my mom would continue to stay on us about is, um, football is not what you find your identity on. And it's just, it's just what you do. You should find your identity in God and Jesus Christ. That's something that will, will never change, um, and will never let you down. Um, but but the rest of it, you know, the rest of life, it's there, there is your controllables and your uncontrollables. So uh, don't, don't find your identity in something that's going to change. Uh, I love that. It, it sounds like you have a very um, healthy and, and stable way of, of looking at it, especially in something that's as, as unstable mm -hmm. as all of that. And it probably serves you well. Yeah. Advising too, um, which is I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, like you said, I got a good, I have a good support system and not that it's perfect in any way. And not that, you know, I don't have my faults and stumbling areas, but, um, man, just keep trying, <laughs> right? Like, again, football has taught me and I got cut probably 12 times, you know, that I'm like, what's the worst that can, is going to happen if you try, you, you know, you could fail, but I'm still here and I have, I have more, more opportunities to try different things and, um, and learn, you know, probably what not to do, but. You know, <laughs> have you ever seen the movie facing the giants um oh, facing the giants it's is a great a christian, uh, christian movie base, about yeah. football yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. i might rewatch yeah. that but i love the Pulling one of the lines from the that back <laughs> oh yeah yeah the uh the crawl like, yeah that yeah. scene is amazing but there's another one in there where the kicker is thinking about trying out for the team and his dad says you're not going to get any more not on the team than you are right now so yeah, even yeah. if you go out there and get embarrassed and get cut, like, yeah, you're still, you're already not on the team. Like what, yeah, what's, yeah. you know, they can't yeah. hurt you. They can't make you go backwards. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, such a good, I yeah, love that. such a, and with everything in life, right. Like, I mean, if that's just a job opportunity or like reaching out to a boss or, you know, whoever that is like, well, you're not, you know, you're, you're not going to get further away from having the job by, by not asking. So you might as well yeah. try. Uh, I think that's great. Now, I had a fun question for you because I, I was thinking yeah. about this interview <laughs> this morning. And I feel like um, I might, I think I'm remembering this correctly. You played against Kansas the only 18 months they've been good in my lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I wanted to ask you about maybe like timing and, and luck mm -hmm. or things that uh, like how you think about those as just different opportunities or or things that, that come and, and when you've gotten good luck or bad luck, or if there's any, yeah. you know, funny memories or, or stories that you have of that time. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I can't, uh, not to speak too highly on Kansas, but they had a, they had a really good team when, when I was in college for, for about 18 months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, crazy enough, there, we, a few of us former players were able to get a NFL players association, former player chapter started here in Kansas city, which is a pretty neat opportunity cool. just to, help guys out explain their benefits and just provide a sense of 
community and also giving back to the Kansas City community, whether you played with the Chiefs or not. Um, and me and and actually a couple guys from KU are the ones that are are in leadership positions right now in that and you know to work together and kind of talk about some of those games and and really the hate and rivalry between us back then is is pretty interesting um and, it's funny and, how that changes too though isn't it like yeah, as soon as yeah. you graduate nobody cares what what school you went to or i'm, I'm sure you still go to the games and yeah. have those rivalries and yeah we'll uh, just I mean, start playing again you want to if you have if you have something that, that you can relate to and work together on it's like all right forget your differences let's you know let's do this thing well um and then back to your like timing question of right time right place like there's so many things in life that are right time right place um and I'm going to take it back to habits and compound interest again, because like the more you do the right thing, right. And don't get discouraged in doing that. You're going to fail sometimes just because of the timing and like the place and, you know, some of the things that you can't control, but the more times you do the right thing, the more times you have the opportunity to succeed, the more times you have the opportunity to succeed that just compounds, compounds, compounds. And, you know, by the time you get down the road, uh, when you are failing, it's so much of a less, a less drop because you've done it time and time and time again, the right way. Yeah. Uh, I love that. I, one more last football question. And then, uh, I want to hear what your bucket list items and, and fun items are for now. And we'll, we'll play a game, but, uh, is there anything you think are, are common misconceptions or, or anything that you would like to clarify or, or let people behind the curtains on that, that you think, man, if everybody just knew this, they would think differently about football or, or the NFL either way. Um, yeah, I think, I, I think that for everybody, you should just take a look at where you were in life and what your thoughts and thought processes and actions looked like at age 21 through 25. Um, and if you were to win the lottery at that point in time, and have really nobody that you needed to answer to, what what would you do? Um, and, I, and I and as you know, as crazy as it seems, and some of the things that you know professional athletes get into um, trouble and you know mistakes, man, they're just like they have been in a spotlight. And you know, <laughs> think of the mistakes that you made and if if you would have been in the spot that was all and, nationally televised yeah, yeah 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 you know and you know praise the lord for you know big lessons and small consequences in some areas for a lot of us but um you know unfortunately we we saw a situation play out this year with the raiders receiver where you know it, it caused a death and and you know could have a huge impact on his life too um you know, and hopefully like, you just hope that that with the life that he has left and whatever opportunity going forward, um, you know, I don't know that that's in football, but that his story, that his situation is somehow able to do some kind of good and changing somebody else's situation. Um, yeah, and, giving everybody a lot more yeah, grace they, and, and permission yeah, to make grace. mistakes, I think uh nfl or not just the people around you right that we're all doing yeah. the best we can we're not doing mm -hmm. dumb things because we think they're dumb things to do <laughs> like we're yeah, trying yeah. To, to live our best life and get through this yeah. thing as much as everybody yeah. else is you know? yeah and i mean heck even like you were saying you know uh <laughs> playing soccer in college and you know the either either go play soccer and get beat up by 24 year olds or you know sit in the hot tub with you know, the, the sorority girls, like, well, I mean, there could be some pretty bad situations that happen there too. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, you, you never know, but yeah, yeah. I, I would, I would think like th that would be my biggest thing is just, you know, the grace and, and the judging that we put on others around us. And, um, and what is it? You, you judge people by what they do, but you judge yourself on your intent and, you know, there's a big difference in, in that and the grace that you give yourself compared to others. <laughs> so uh, what's on your fun bucket list? What would be the most fun for you and, and your family now? Do you have any uh, big dreams yeah. or things you're working towards? Yeah. So, um, 
current currently we have we have some property out in peculiar which is a, you know we're moving out to um here in the near future and like the biggest things that i want i mean i grew up on 80 acres in peculiar missouri when my parents moved out here when i was like five six years old so like running around uh running through the ponds riding four wheelers and dirt bikes and stuff like that and right now is to get my family out on, on the acreage that we have and start that process of of doing those things and allowing my kids to grow up um you know probably throwing dirt dirt balls at each other and you know, running through creek beds and that's uh, a lot better than uh yeah. made up uh video game snowballs or, or whatever yeah. else could, yeah. could happen so i love that it sounds like great. the peacefulness of like the wildlife out there is just I, I mean it's it truly is amazing um and then just as far as like biz, business and, and work and stuff like that just to continue growing and helping as many people that <clears throat> that want it and need it um and kind of the areas that that were really really working towards as a as a group uh that's awesome now i i guess i did have i lied i have one more question for you then i we're gonna play a game but yeah. I, I thought this was interesting i don't know any uh have any idea what your financial uh situation was or i, I didn't like but i'm imagining mm -hmm. that after that long even on league minimums like you could have retired or not done anything uh did did how mm -hmm. do you feel about your career now is it's got to be something more that you want to do than than have to do um yeah after your time is that right yeah um i mean i i probably could have you know penny pinched and not done anything but um you know what kind of a life lifestyle is that i i know that i've got a platform i know that you know i've got interests and things that that are that are going to be helpful to society and so why not you know get get the potential the full potential out of myself um you know some of the things that i thought as i was transitioning from football into whatever you know what do i what do i like to do what am i interested in and you know one of the things was just i wanted to manage my own money at the time and as i got more and more interested in that um just found out some of the things that the advisor that my wife and I had through our playing career weren't in the best interest of us. Um, and how many people, I was talking to Martin Rucker, who I played tight end with at Mizzou. Yeah. And he's in construction now. And he said, you know, I thought, what, what is everybody going to need for, you know, always, you know, people, people will always be building things and, you know, constructing and, you know, even things that need reconstructed, like they're going to need construction forever. And it's like, yeah, that's a great, great idea. And uh, it's like, what else is there that people are going to need forever? And, you know, whether you do it yourself or have somebody else do it, you know, why is money management and, you know, financial planning, whether that's in, you know, American dollars or cryptocurrency or, or whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever the world looks like in 20 years, um, you know, people always need sound advice um again whether they can do it or not or they just need like that backboard of you're doing things right just stay on this track and here's like the vision of where we're going to go um you know people need that and it touches every aspect of of people's lives you know financially you know tell me one thing that <laughs> that that money doesn't really affect in your life and you know I mean, yeah. I think there could be like a, a few small things, but it could play a part in, in a lot of it, different areas. So, yeah, that's a great answer yeah. for, for what and why. I like it. Are you ready to play a game? Let's do it. All right. You got uh, survey says survey says is uh, very similar to a TV game show you might have seen. All we're looking for is one of the top answers. So we surveyed 100 people, asked them to name one of the seven dwarves. What do you think they said? Let's see. I want the seven dwarves sleepy. Let's go with that. Sleepy. Number one answer. You nailed it. Uh, there you go. There's obviously uh, seven others, but uh, you got the number one answer. Name a reason you might not recognize an old friend. Hmm. Well, I, I recently shaved a beard off. So um, different, different hairstyle. Hairstyle is good. That's number five, uh, weight gain or loss uh, or age uh, were the top two answers there. Uh, all right. Name a gift 
from their husbands that wives pretend to like. <laughs> what did I recently give my wife? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what did you give your wife for Christmas? <laughs> oh boy, um, that they pretend to like. Yeah, I would like cleaning supplies. <laughs> oh, that's on there. That's that's number two. Clothes or shoes was was number one. I feel okay. like you got to pick out your own as a ladies, unless you're a very I, talented I, guy with fashion. I, yeah, I feel like I can pick out some good shoes for my wife, but but may, I mean maybe that's me. Maybe uh, yeah, maybe I'm not. <laughs> I don't even guess on sizes or colors or anything, but maybe that's me and my yeah my wife. yeah. There you go. <laughs> nice awesome. Well, I appreciate you being on the the show and playing some games with us and and having fun. Uh, you can find Chase Kaufman at bmgadvisors.com or just look him up on LinkedIn and connect there. Anything else uh, you want to add, asks, or gives for the audience? How can we help you? You help us. Yeah. Um, if, I mean, if you're looking for financial advising or investing, um, whether that's like for setting up 401ks or, or retirement plans, um, planning for a big situation in your life, you know, a, a wedding or kids college or um, your own retirement. Those, those are kind of the big things that, that we do at BMG. And then um, I also do some speaking on the side, whether it's, you know, to kids, sports programs, schools, um, businesses, whatever, um, you know, I, I enjoy encouraging people and just giving them I don't know, some of the stories that I was able to go through throughout the ups and downs of my football and sports career and life. Uh, I appreciate you sharing those with us today. Again, bmgadvisors.com. And for more information on Playful Humans, go to playfulhumans.com. If you enjoyed this episode, send it to somebody that needs to hear it. Maybe there's a, a young athlete in your life or somebody that wants to, to follow a passion and, and go after something uh, big. I think a lot of great lessons here today on how to pull that off. And you can take a playfulness quiz at playfulhumans.com slash quiz. Figure out which playful personality you are. Do you like to go and play out in the woods like uh, Chase and his family or with other people like me? <laughs> go find and figure it out. Live for today. Keep on chasing the sunshine. And go out and play. Go play, everybody.